फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एक दंत एनवायरमेंट एजुकेशन एज आई हैव सेड इन द लास्ट वीडियो दैट वी आर कमिंग विद अ सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स डिस्कशन ऑन द सब्जेक्ट वेटेज एज पर जी पी एस सी एम सी क्यू प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर डिफरेंट इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट्स सो फ्रेंड्स today we are going to start a new series of lectures on transportation engineering in which we are going to cover a very important subject as on as per the gpsc that is your bridge engineering okay so if you are new to this channel please subscribe the channel so that whenever we are going to upload a new video you will be updated with our upcoming videos also okay friends so please like it and subscribe the channel the series that we are going to start from today will be very much helpful to all the aspirants of gpsc as well as the students of other state public service commissions okay so after uh, completing and uh, also after completing the bridge engineering series of lecture we are planning to bring a revision video which will be consisting of important topics and that will boost your preparation at the last moment okay friends so please like it and subscribe the channel for the latest update of gpsc as well as the upcoming videos on the gpsc so let's start it transportation engineering in which we are uh, starting with our part 1 okay bridge engineering part 1 let's start it so uh, the weightage of the subject as per gpsc the trend going on in in the gpsc from last 3 4 years that uh, bridge engineering itself consists of weightage of 12 to 15 marks it's a huge weightage it's a new subject added to the syllabus and it's consisting an important weightage so and uh, i very much assure you that if you are going to uh, watch all the series of the bridge engineering as well as the revision session which consist of the important topics i guarantee you that you will be scoring the full marks that is your 12 to 15 marks whatever will be the question number of questions in the examination that all questions will be 100% be covered in this series nothing will be apart from this might be possible that two three questions will be apart but uh, i will be covering most of the questions that are available on the websites books and everything okay so i will try to cover all the aspects as also uh, when we are going to uh, see the important topics so many questions will be form from that important topics also okay so i assure that uh, almost every question will be covered from these series of lectures only okay so you have to just put your little efforts and you will be scoring the full marks in the bridge engineering okay friends so please like it and subscribe the channel for the further updates of the videos and the lectures okay friends so let's start it the very first one is for the bridge of the national highway the class of loading considered as per irc is so as we know that there are different classes of loading as per irc class double a class double b class a and b so the option for this question is correct option is class double a so let's see the detail solution so here you can see that class b as per irc this type of loading is used to design the temporary bridges like temporary bridges like timber bridge okay so this here you can see that the timber bridge is a class b type okay here again one question will be formed that timber bridge is a comes under which type of bridge whether it is a temporary bridge or a permanent bridge so it is a temporary bridge okay so next class is your class double a so this type of loading is considered for the design of new bridges especially the heavy loading bridges so this class is considered for heavy loading bridges okay and uh, on uh, 
bridges on highways in cities industrial areas etc in class a loading generally there are two types of vehicles considered first one is the track type and second one is the wheeled type so again there is a question that which type of vehicles are considered for class double a loading so it can be track type wheel type track type and wheel type both none of the above so answer will be both track type and wheel type okay third class is class a this type of loading is used in the design of all permanent bridges it is considered as a standard live load of the bridge so there may be a question that which class is considered as a standard live load of the bridge so the answer will be class a will be considered as a standard live load of the bridge when we design a bridge using a class double a type loading then also we have to check for class a loading okay so another is class 70r this loading is to be normally adopted on all the roads on which the permanent bridges and culverts are constructed bridges designed for class 70r loading should be checked for class a loading also so make sure that whenever you are constructing a bridge of class double a class a or class 70r you have to check the bridge for first class a then and then only it will be considered to be a load taking bridge okay moving ahead with the next question in bridge construction the breadth the width of the expansion joint is so the answer is 25 mm okay let's see it as per the revised interim specification for expansion joints for adaptation adoption on all national highway and other centrally sponsored bridge projects so this manually generally adopt for all concern con construction of bridge projects centrally sponsored and for all national highways okay and in that manual under the chapter 2 and point number 2.3 it is mentioned that expansion joint shall cater for a horizontal movement of 0.25 mm and a vertical movement of 0.2 okay so here friends there are many questions can be formed that uh, what is the expansion joint in the what is the expansion joint in the vertical moments so answer will be 2 mm already one question is formed that what is the expansion joint in the horizontal moment so it is 25 mm okay another question from this point point number 2.4 what is that the minimum width in the traffic direction of a joint shall be 500 mm and the maximum width shall be 750 mm okay so question will be what will be the minimum width and the maximum width and uh, respectively in the traffic direction so the answer will be minimum is 500 mm and the maximum is 750 mm okay the next question will be from 2.5 that what is the minimum depth of the joint so the minimum joint depth is 75 mm and the maximum depth of the joint should not exceed 100 mm okay so these are the some of the questions that can be asked in other uh, exams upcoming exams of the gpsc okay friends so moving to the next which of the following is a type of elastomeric bearing okay the word itself depicts that what is the property of elastomeric bearings elastomeric so elasto means what elasticity which material possesses the property elasticity so from the given options you can see that the neoprene rubber rubber possesses the property of elasticity so the final answer will be neoprene rubber bearing okay next there can be a question that uh, what are the different which of the following is not a type of bearing used for the bridges so here you can see that the, there are different types of bearings for the bridges which includes sliding bearing rocker and pin bearing ro roller bearings elastomeric bearing curved bearing port bearing and disc bearing okay so make sure that any options given apart from this will not be a type of bearing used for bridges okay so moving to next 
in a proof testing of a bridge the load w shall be applied in the stage of okay here they are talking about the proof testing what is proof testing of a bridge proof testing is a type of test which is also known as a load testing it is one type of load testing of a bridge okay and here they have told that the load w is applied okay the load is applied in a stages of so what are the different stages that load are applied so the here answer is your option number d okay w by 4 w by 2 3 w by 4 so how we are going to uh, know that uh, what will be uh, this w by 4 w by 2 in proof testing of a bridge okay so here is the answer that c loading and unloading procedure loading and unloading procedure okay so loading operation stages from 0% 50% 75% 90 100% of the test load shall be completed within 24 hours you have to apply the load within 24 hours and it should be gradually increasing okay you have to not to put the load sudden load okay sudden load is not applied on the bridge the load is applied gradually you can see that 0% 50% and 75 90 up to 100% and that should be completed within how much hours 14 24 hours okay similarly the unloading operation should be from 100% 90% 75 50 0% and that should also be completed in how many hours 24 hours okay so both loading and unloading operation should take place gradually loading should be gradually and unloading should also be gradually okay and that all should be completed in 24 hours one very much important point is that after complete loading the structure for 100% of its test load it shall be retained for 24 hours on the structure after applying the 100% load that load is to be retained for 24 hours on the structure okay so the correct option was that's why d so if we uh, if we assume if we assume that w is equal to 1 then the formula then we can find out the percentage that w by 4 into 100 okay and if we are putting the value W equal to one in W, then we will be getting your answer. What? Here it's twenty five, so it's a twenty five percent. So gradually uh, you can see that initially it's twenty five percent, fifty percent, and then later is seventy five percent. Okay. So as per the procedure, the final answer is your D. Okay, friends. So next, for bridge span less than nine meter. IRC class double A and seventy R loading of wheeled type vehicle. The provision for impact and dynamic action is so. The answer is your twenty five percent. How it comes twenty five percent? So as per the IRC six two thousand sixteen clause two hundred eight point three for class double A loading and class seventy R loading. the value of impact percentage shall be taken as follows okay so the here you can see that here the span for less than 9 meter and for span of 9 meter or more there are two categories okay so in our question this is asked over here okay in our question this is asked the span less than 9 meter so for tracked vehicle 25% for the span up to 5 meter linearly reducing to 10% for the span up to 9% means if the span is of 5 meter then for tracked vehicle the percentage is 25 and if the span increases from 5 meter to 9 meter the percentage reduces to 10% okay and for wheeled type uh, vehicles the impact percentage is 25 so our answer was here it's 25 percent okay you can more see that for the span of for the span of 9 meter and more uh, there are reinforced concrete bridge okay 
देन स्टील ब्रिज फॉर रेनको रेनफोर्स्ड कॉन्क्रीट ब्रिज ट्रैक्ट व्हीकल व्हील्ड व्हीकल ट्रैक्ट व्हीकल अगेन टेन परसेंट अप टू द स्पान ऑफ फोर्टी मीटर एंड नाइन फॉर द नाइन फॉर स्पान इन एक्सेस ऑफ फोर्टी मीटर फॉर व्हील्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट फॉर द स्पान अप टू ट्वेल्व मीटर सो दीज आर द सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो कैन बी फॉर्म चांसेस ऑफ क्वेश्चन टू बी आस फ्रॉम दिस पोर्शन ओके सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्शन फॉर एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू सो प्लीज नोट डाउन इट ऑल्सो ओके फ्रेंड्स लेट्स मूव अ हेड लॉन्ग स्पान ब्रिज हैज द लेंथ सो आंसर इज मोर देन आंसर इज योर मोर देन वन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी मीटर ओके सो एज पर आई आर सी एस पी जीरो वन थ्री गाइडलाइंस फॉर द डिजाइन ऑफ स्मॉल ब्रिजेस एंड कलवर्ड्स यू कैन सी द कलवर्ड्स आर having the span length of up to 6 meter small bridge up to 30 meter minor bridge up to 60 meter major bridge span between 60 to 180 and for the long span bridge it's about 120 okay so remember these things also may chances of coming the question in the next gpsc from this point okay next Which of the following class of pre-stressed concrete bridge attribute to allow the flexural tensile stress without any visible cracking? So, okay, make sure visible cracking is asked. And what other to allow the flexural tensile stress without any visible? Okay, without any visible cracking is what very much important thing. So here are the class one, two, three, and four, and the option is your class two. How comes the class two? Let's see it. As per the stress limitation, as per uh, B S eight one one zero part one clause four point one point three, the topic stress limitation. Class one no tensile stress. Class two flexural tensile stress but no visible cracking. Okay, you can see that flexural tensile stress but no visible cracking. And the class three is. flexural tensile stress but surface crack width not exceeding a maximum value of 0.1 mm for mem members in aggressive environment okay aggressive environment and 0.2 mm for other members and here <coughs> sorry as per the stress limitation class 4 is not applicable so the option is your correct option is your class 2 flexural tensile st stress but no visible cracking okay moving to next which of the following code is useful for the bridge designing you all know that the answer is your irc 6 okay now it is also very much important to know the other codes if asked in the other exams that uh, what is irc Thirty-eight stands for okay. So you should know that what actually the IRC thirty-eight and IS three three seven zero is for okay. So let's see it. IRC thirty-eight is for guidelines for the design of horizontal curves. IS three three seven zero is a code of practice for concrete structure for the storage of liquids. Okay, IRC six. standard specification and code of practice of road bridges okay and is 875 part 1 code of practice for design load for buildings and structures okay next question bearings are provided in bridge 2 why the bearings are provided so bearings are provided to allow displacement in vertical and horizontal directions okay let's in, see in detail <laughs> this all things i will be covering in the important topics okay bearing portion is very much important topic next the bridge having its floor supported at the bottom of the main girder is known as so there might be options that deck bridge will come or semi through bridge or through bridge so it's important to know that what is through bridge and what is semi through bridge deck bridge okay before guessing the option so here uh, the answer is through bridge but uh, uh, we have to see the other options also why what comes in the definitions 
so the types of bridges based on the position of the floor are three types deck bridge through bridge semi through bridge okay so what is deck bridge superstructure or the floor of the bridge is positioned in between the high flood level and formation level okay then second one is your through bridge in case of through bridge superstructure of the bridge is completely above the formation level okay superstructure of the bridge is completely above the formation level and the next one is your semi through bridge if the superstructure of the bridge is partly above and partly below okay the superstructure of the bridge is partly above and partly below the form formation level then it is called as semi through bridge okay so this was the definitions and our answer was through bridge okay next rocker bearing are suitable for the span so what are rocker bearing again you can see that the same question from bearing chapter okay three question up till now has been asked so the correct option is your more than 20 meter how comes let's see as per the design criteria and the codal provisions regarding the roller bearing as per is 83 part 1 so here you can see that the steel roller come rocket rocket bearing permits the longitudinal movement by rolling and simultaneously allow the rotational movement case steel roller has been in general use for the major bridge with the span above 20 meter okay so this was there the bearing may consist of a single roller double roller or a nest of roller so again a question can be asked from this point the minimum diameter of the roller shall be 75 mm uh, note out note uh, note down this okay a question can be formed what is the minimum diameter of the roller the ratio of length to the diameter l by d ratio of the roller shall not be greater than 6 okay and the next point is gap between the roller shall not be greater than 50 mm in case of multiple roller okay so these are the some of the important points regarding the rocket roller so please note uh, note down this okay may chances of coming the questions from the bearing portions you can see the bearing uh, topic is very much important from exam point of view moving to the next question the type of loading to be considered while designing the temporary bridge okay you can see that the temporary bridge again comes if temporary bridge comes what comes in your mind timber it's a tum timber bridge okay then loading should be what of what class class b very first one we have seen in the options okay so as per irc recommendation the minimum straight length of approach on either side of the bridge should be 15 mm okay the answer is your 15 mm how comes let's see as per the irc recommendation the minimum length of the approach at the ends of the bridge is 15 mm okay so this is the main point 15 mm minimum length of the approach is okay on either side of there should be a minimum 50 length if uh, suitable necessary to provide the more side distance then you have to increase the approaches okay but the minimum length is your 15 mm okay also you can see that if there is a change in the gradient a suitable vertical curve shall be introduced as per irc 23 so an important questions if there is a change in the gradient then to provide a suitable vertical curve as which irc is used so irc is 23 okay okay so your next question is culverts are provided for linear waterway up to maximum of so culverts you have seen that the span of the culvert up to 6 meter so the correct answer is your 6 meter okay let's see the answer next question sorry what should be the minimum width of the foot path while designing a bridge for the ruler areas it should be 1.5 meter okay foot paths on the bridges are decided on the basis of foot paths on the bridges are decided on the basis of pedestrian traffic okay and the minimum width of the foot path provided in the ruler areas should be 1.5 meter okay then another thing you can uh, note here that 
at the entrance at the entrance of the bridges on both the sides of the footpath barriers should be provided to restrict the entrance of the two wheeler as well as three four wheelers on to the footpath okay so this was very much important that the minimum width of the footpath was how much 1.5 meter next the selection of site for the road bridge depends on there are many factors which are uh, this uh, required for the selection of site of the road bridges okay so here you can see that the options are nature of the river bank and the embankment width and the depth of the river availability of good and the safe foundation for the bridge so the option is all of the above let's see the different other uh, factors also that require for selecting a bridge site okay so here you can see that the river first one the river ridge should be straight second there should be a uniform and a steady flow in the ridge third the river bank should be stable fourth the width of the river channel should be minimum fifth the site should be sufficiently away from confluence point okay sixth one availability of hard strata and non irritable foundation seventh no excessive scouring and silting at the bridge side should take place Eighth one minimum obstruction to the natural waterways. There should be a minimum obstructions. Okay, next the bridge axis and the river flow direction should be ninety degree angle. Very important points. Ninth one. Okay, very important point. Next is the bridge should be absolutely on level. Okay, there should be a sufficient clearance of high flood level. you have to very much clear about the high flood level of that particular site before deciding the site uh, site for the construction of bridge okay absence of excessive underwater construction work and there should be the availability of construction material so that the uh, the project should be very much economical okay moving to next point according to the indian railway the bridges having total waterways less than 18 meter or having any span of clear waterways less than 12 meter is dash so there are minor bridge major bridge important bridge culvert and the answer is your minor bridge okay next for bridging gaps in hilly areas the bridges are ideal solution which type of bridges are ideal solution to this problem so the answer is your suspension bridge okay these all topics we are going to cover in the important topics okay this one the bridge uh, bridging gaps in the hilly area so we will cover this topic as well as the this topic waterways topic okay minimum uh, what is the total waterways okay length of the total uh, waterways for the minor bridge major bridge important bridge and the culverts these all topics we are going to cover in the the revision videos okay that will be the important topics consisting of next for the maximum span which type of bridge is recommended so the answer is your cable suspension bridge okay next for temporary bridge which of the following is the bridge constructed without intermediate supports so temporary bridge and again the option is without intermediate support so the answer is your trusses let's see the answer in detail because uh, we have to know the answer truss why it came truss and what are the uh, what are the answer for different other options like uh, crats creeps and trusses okay let's say it so timber bridges are classified into two types timber bridges are classified into two types first one is with intermediate support and second one is without intermediate support so under the topic intermediate supports there are further classified into timber trestles pipe bands creeps and crats okay and uh, timber trestles are used as intermediate supports in the timber bridges they are usually constructed of sal wood bellies round and square in the sections okay next here uh, below you can see that timber bridges without intermediate support so the temporary bridges may be designed without any you know intermediate support to span the full width of the bridge or 
stream by using the following so trusses cantilevers and suspensions okay if you are not using the intermediate supports then you have to definitely use the trusses or the suspension or cantilevers but if you are using the intermediate supports then it should be a timber crystal pipe bands or creeps and crackles okay so friends uh, this was the first part and uh, hopeful we are uh, coming up uh, shortly uh, one day tomorrow only the with the next part of bridge engineering okay and if you are new to this channel please like it subscribe it for the updates of the new videos that we are going to upload on gp related to gpsc okay upcoming exams so we will be <laughs> shortly coming up with uh, our next part on bridge engineering also we will be brought the revision session on bridge engineering which will be covering all the important topics as i have discussed with you all in between the questions um, mcq sessions okay so thanks for watching the ekdant environment education friends